Hi, this is Todd with Damasteel, and today we're going to etch a few Damasteel samples and also cover a few safety tips. I can't stress enough how important safety is when you're dealing with acids, especially when they're hot. You know, you notice we're outside, do it outside. The vapors are really bad. Um, rubber gloves, splash guard. It's best to have another person there that can help you if something, if something goes wrong. I want you to have a first aid kit available, a bucket of water that you can rinse yourself off if you end up spilling the acid on yourself. So I can't stress that enough, just how important it is to, to follow some really you know, safe and sane procedures when you're doing this. I want to talk about all the different things that you need to actually etch damascus steel. So we went down and just bought these items locally at the hardware store just to kind of demonstrate that you could, it's not real complicated. You can just get, you know, any kind of item like this as long as it does the job that you need it to do. We need a pot of hot water uh, for the way I etch damascus steel. I like it, uh, the acid to be hot. You're going to need some rubber gloves, some Windex. You're going to need some stainless steel wire, muriatic acid. We got some jars, uh, one is for neutralizing, one the acid's gonna be in. Some WD-40, some good shop rags. Got a safety shield, just for splashes. A pair of wire cutters. And with that, we should be able to completely edge our damascus steel blades. The samples I prepared today of damascus steel are mirror polished. Um, I wanted to show that how the damascus steel looks when it's actually contrasting with the gray up against the mirror polish. However, damascus steel can be finished in any way you want to do it. You can do a satin finish, you can do a bead blast, it's still going to etch, but the contrast um, seems to be more pleasing to my eye with a, with a mirror polish. So these samples are mirror polished on one side and we're going to go through the initial prep of cleaning them. They've, they're already on wires and so I'm going to use Windex to degrease them. Damascus steel can't have any finger oils whatsoever when you're going into the etch. Um, it's going to act as a resist and it's going to actually keep the acid from touching the steel and doing the etch. So we've got to go through with rubber gloves on so that we don't get any finger oils. We're going to go through with a really good rag and Windex and clean these samples one by one and really make sure that everything's degreased. The next step is to prepare our neutralizer. We're just going to put uh, baking soda and water and then as soon as it comes out of the acid it's going to go in here and it's going to kill the acid. I'm going to go ahead and mix the uh, baking soda and the water. Wind's blowing a little bit here. I should do it. Get my All set. So the next step we're going to need to do is we've got our samples prepped, we've got them all cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and start heating up our acid. Um, we're going to do that. A lot of people have asked me, uh, how do you actually heat up the acid? We do that in a double boiler, which is no more than a glass jar in water that's uh, been heated up. So we're going to pour this acid in here and let this uh, slowly heat up to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to be the most critical thing is that it gets up where it's just starting to steam about like a cup of coffee. Next up I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the acid into the jar. I'm going to do this outside the water just so I don't spill any acid into water. Then I'm going to put the acid into my water and let it heat up. So I'm just going to let this acid sit here in this double boiler and warm up. Once I see steam coming off the acid, I know it's about ready. So it's time to go ahead and uh, etch this sample. Our acid's ready. We have our, our neutralizer ready. So we're going to go ahead and go into the hot acid. And I'm going to start watching the bubbles. The bubbles are going to start forming rather quickly. And I'm going to tap it on the side of the glass to release some of those bubbles to make sure they're not sticking to the sample. And if they do, it may affect the etch in that spot. Periodically, I'm going to pull it out and kind of look at it, see where we're at. It's starting to give us our pattern. I'm just going to watch it 
watch the bubble formation. Now, because I'm using hot acid, this is gonna happen a lot faster than room temperature acid. It's exactly the way I like to do it this way. It's already looking good. I can get probably a little bit more out of it. As soon as I'm done, I'm gonna go right into my baking soda and water solution. And that's ready. I think that looks pretty good. You're going to see it fizzle. That means it killed it. So when I come out of the neutralizer, the first thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and hit this with some WD-40. Get the water off of it. And with the WD-40 on it, I'm going to let it soak overnight with that to lock these oxides in. You've got this black layer of this oxide that we've created. And what we want to do is lock that in place and don't wipe it off. If you wipe it off, you're going to get, you're going to kill the contrast that you just worked so hard to get. So leave it on there, and let it hang overnight with the WD-40. We're going to pour some ferric chloride that's traditionally used in other etching processes. Just going to put a little bit of it into our muriatic, see if we can get a little more color out of our sample. I'm going to stir that real quick. All right. I'm going to go ahead and try that. Ferric chloride tends to want to etch darker than muriatic, so I add a little bit of it to see if we can darken our etch just slightly. I'm going to neutralize this and then I'm going to hit it with a WD-40. And that looks like it's good. We just neutralized it. There it is. There it is. That looks great. Just to wrap this video up, we want to go over a couple things that we covered. The recipes, you know, it's kind of up to you. The basic thing is just remember ferric chloride, muriatic acid, different concentrations of those. Uh, those are the main things. Just the, the key to all that is to be safe with it. You're going to have the best success with damage steel with your surface prep. Just remember that. Your polishing, your cleanliness, the way you prep the part for etching. Even though we, we've kind of laid out some of these different ways for you to try out these different uh, acids, you need to figure out your own system and your own method for your particular knives, the way you make them, and your shop and your equipment. Even though I've showed a lot of different uh, mirror polished parts and things like that, and we feel like that's a really good way to represent the material, however you want to do it, it'll still work. So you, you need to experiment with your surface finishes. It'll, it'll work with a bee blast, a satin finish, mirror polish. So just play around with it and really figure out what's going to be best for you and your knives. Remember, any surface that you don't want etched, all your precision surfaces on your folders, things like that, make sure you mask it off. And you have to mask it off with something that's going to resist the acid you plan on using.